G'day there guys, has spent 50% of his life sitting down and doesn't plan on stopping here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash am I the a-hole. It's your host Marky, I hope you enjoy your stay today. Tell me what you think about it down in the comments, smash that like button and have a great time. Thank you. Posted by user Bruj Crockett 96 titled, Am I the a-hole for wearing a skirt that makes my boyfriend feel uncomfortable? So I, 22 female, have got this nice, thick, pipey, knee-long skirt I like to wear when I can outside of work. The only downside of the skirt is that when I completely bend over, you can see a bit of underwear. We were going for a walk and I wore the skirt. At the point of leaving, boyfriend 24 male says, I don't want you to wear that skirt. It makes me uncomfortable. Change, please. I asked him why I can't wear it, and how does it make you uncomfortable? He got mad that I asked and told me it just does. Then he said we're not going unless you change. I felt bad, but I changed into jeans. He had a comment about the jeans as well. Every time he sees Chloe from the show Lucifer in her jeans, he cringes because it makes him feel uncomfortable because it's so tight. This was my one day off this week so I really wanted to do things together, as he always says we don't get much time because of work. I had a fight about it with him that it came across as controlling for me. He told me I didn't validate his feelings, and that I could have been a good partner in Thunk. Hmm, this might make him feel uncomfortable. I'll just change for him, as a gesture, and that I was selfish for not considering his feelings. Reddit? Am I the a-hole for wanting to wear my skirt, even though it makes my boyfriend uncomfortable? I'm gonna say it's your body, your choice on this one, and he's your boyfriend, he's supposed to be your biggest supporter, and if he's trying to control the things you wear because, hmm, it might upset him, then I think perhaps he needs to think of his role as boyfriend in the relationship. I do think that there are exceptions to this, and that people do and can wear things that are wildly inappropriate for the public's eyes. Perhaps then, the thought, hmm, this might make him feel uncomfortable, I'll just change for him, would be warranted. But this is not one of those situations. It's not like OP is walking around the streets with a giant dildo strapped to her forehead, with a whole bunch of, you know, imagery going on that the public doesn't want to see. That just isn't happening, so I feel it's uh, out of place for the boyfriend to be saying this, as it's coming from his insecurities. And obviously, OP isn't cool with that. So... OP is not the a-hole for wanting to wear their skirt, even though it makes the boyfriend uncomfortable. Edit. This was last weekend, and a few other things happened that day too. I broke up with him. He came to me in the night crying. He never cries. And he told me he was sorry, and he acted out of insecurity, and appreciates I changed for him. He suggested couples counselling. He made an appointment for Friday. Apart from the relationship stuff, it was more me asking myself if I didn't validate his feelings. I was a bit like, you can talk about how you feel and express, but not act on it. I also had a bit of a, it's not my problem attitude. That's why I'm asking. Not the a-hole. Wear what you want and don't feel guilty for it. Don't let him dictate your wardrobe. That's classic controlling behavior. You're right. She should just drop the skirt and go out in her underwear. That'll show him. Not the a-hole. You changed into jeans and he still had an issue. Your skirt wasn't even a mini skirt. What are the odds that you'll bend over that much and it's the end of the world if someone sees half an inch of your underwear for a third of a second? Even if it had been a mini skirt, you would be 100% right and he would have no right to tell you to change. But I'd believe in that case it might be coming from a place of immature jealousy and sexism. But in this case, I think he's mad in general that you don't do what he says without question. He just wants to control you, and thinks getting you to do little things will make you more compliant. We have a small long window next to the front door. It has those kind of curtains to blur it a bit. It's like 10 centimeters wide. I can't walk or sit in my underwear on the couch five meters away because someone might see it when they walk past. He just tells me to put on some pants or tosses me a blanket. Yeah, that's absurd. Does he enjoy telling you what to do in general? He tells me he is a person of reason, 
so he firmly believes what he says and does is the right thing. I wanted coke one night, but I couldn't have it and didn't give a reason at the time. Later on, he said that we've had enough coke for a while, so I'm getting you water. I am now confident that his commands on your clothing are not really anxiety that people will see your underwear, or related to modesty at all. I think it's all a strategy to feel like he owns you and is in charge of you. Updates. Am I the a-hole for wearing a skirt that makes my boyfriend uncomfortable? So, it's been two plus months, and I figured some of you might want to see an update on the whole situation. First of all, a big thank you to all those people that gave me advice, and were the lovely judging people of Reddit. Without a doubt, that am I the a-hole made a difference for me. So thank you. Long story short, we broke up, I moved out, and am so happy now. I know it's normal to read and it will always go this way, but ignorant me always read these posts thinking, nah, that ain't gonna be me. Here we are single and all and never felt better. Now the longer version. After the skirt thing, he made a few other comments and I had it. I broke up with him at the end of May with no idea what to do next. Just emigrated to this country while living together. We went to therapy where he got told in his face that he was an abusive and controlling asshole, and if he truly didn't see any of that, he can be diagnosed since they thought it might be autism or high-functioning Asperger's. It was bad. I cried a lot during therapy and tried to open up to her about the situations, and not knowing to go on because he didn't mean it right. When she was out of the room, he called me a crybaby, again as a joke. Later that night, he also told me he knew about all of my Reddit posts, and that he could see, etc, everything. So most likely also this one, yay! After the second session, they told me, two individual therapists, that he will not change, and I do not want to sign up for a life like this with kids, etc. They see it so much, and if I had a way of preventing this future, I should for my emotional well-being. I moved out one and a half months ago on my own, made some new friends and started looking for new jobs. He tried to contact me several times, and we did talk sometimes. It would always go that he told me he had changed and can see it now, but my love was long gone. I told him I didn't love him anymore, but he kept pushing until I blocked him. He told me he was having panic attacks, was suicidal and whatnot. He needed someone to talk to, but that someone wasn't me. Just having normal people around me while I'm wearing my skirt and doing my things without negativity is just a big breath of fresh air. It's so relieving I can't tell you how much I feel like myself again, and most of all, not crazy. I'm doing hobbies, sports, therapy and whatnot, but I'm happy. One of the few moments this month I did feel lonely, I sometimes text him back but ended that completely too, and just reread all of my situation with him, 32, within a year and a bit. Apparently, he also cheated on me with his ex, telling her that he wanted to marry her instead of me. Her ass was way better than mine. I had to work out more to earn a compliment, according to him. And so that was that. No more Mr. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that way. Thanks for anyone reading this. If you are in a situation with a partner and you doubt yourself or question yourself all the time by things he says or does, please listen to that gut feeling because you aren't wrong or a bad person for thinking it, and it tells you more than enough. In the end, I was not the a-hole. Thanks everyone for your inputs and opinions. Good for you, but I'd like to add on as a person with Asperger's. The things your ex were doing are definitely familiar to me, in that they sound a lot like the behaviours I've grown up with, but undiagnosed and allowed to run wild, unchecked. I am so thankful I was able to be diagnosed and given help before they got too bad, lest I end up like your ex. Still working at it, but I'm getting there. Ex, if you are reading this, from one Aspie to another, get some help, or watch your world burn around you. The things you've done already warrant the latter, by the way. Frankly, you don't deserve to be a part of our community. Good luck in all you do, OP. You've got one Aspie rooting for ya. 
And you're awesome. You too. You did the right thing. Posted by user Novel Cost. Titled, Am I the a-hole for using if when it comes to my son becoming a father? My son, 17, came to us and said that he had gotten his girlfriend pregnant. Him even having a girlfriend was news to us, so we asked a few questions. When I found out who it was, I admit it made the situation worse. Our town isn't Mayberry, but it's not a sprawling metropolitan. The girl is the same age as him and is on her third pregnancy, which is well known at their high school, all by different fathers. First pregnancy, she had an abortion. Second, she miscarried. Now she's on her third with my son. We agreed to meet with her parents. I said that while I'm not against the kids dating, we won't be giving any money until we do a DNA test and know the child is my son's. I even agreed to pay for one of those tests that you can do while she's still pregnant, so if he was, we could start figuring stuff out before the baby comes. Her parents agreed to it, but seemed turned off as to why I kept saying things as, if, son is the father. I didn't come out and say it, but I thought it was pretty naive of them, given their daughter's situation. They know of her previous pregnancies, as they mentioned them in the meeting. My husband and I sort of got into a disagreement about it afterwards. Obviously, our son isn't innocent either. He got himself in a situation where he potentially got a girl pregnant at 17. At the same time, I want to protect him from a potential situation. I don't think this girl or her parents are after money. They are not in need of it. I just think they don't want their daughter to go through this alone, and I don't blame them. And if this baby is our grandchild, they will not lack for love. But I'm not getting attached. Husband asked if I would feel different if she were, say, our older son's first girlfriend, who was a much different girl, not a very racy past. I admitted I wouldn't. He said that's what made me look bad here. Am I the a-hole for how I feel here? I guess some people could see you as slut-shaming in a sense, or that you look down on her for this being her third baby, and I can also see people siding with you for those views, because it's understandable you're just out here trying to do the best for your son. My opinion on this one is that you're not the a-hole for how you feel here, because I do feel like you are trying to protect the son, and she does have a history with pregnancies. It's not entirely impossible that there is another father to this son. The best course of action is to do what you guys are pushing for. Get a paternity test done, keep it as an if situation, and then the truth will come out after the fact. Can't blame you for that one, you're not the a-hole. You're the a-hole. Your son needs to accept responsibility and take care of the child. He was with the mother, so he is the father. There is a reason France and other European countries have outlawed paternity tests in cases like this. This child needs support from both of its parents, and trying to weasel your way out of this is gross. What kind of wacky doodle bullcrap reasoning is this? It doesn't sound like OP's son isn't accepting responsibility. OP just wants to make sure the child is actually her son's. And OP says, if he is the father, then of course he will be there. We will help him provide financial support. I never said we wouldn't at any point, I've been preparing him for that since we found out. If he's not, biologically, I wouldn't be helping them out financially. He can still choose to act as a father to the baby since they are together. No a-holes here. But saying if isn't really going to change much. It's not going to make your son less likely to be the dad, so I don't really know that it's worth emphasizing that unless you're just wanting to annoy them. Not the a-hole. Girl's got a reputation. Reputations are important to uphold, or they are going to bite you in the ass. No a-holes here. You are both trying to protect your kids. In your case, would you rather eat crow and be happy if it comes out that your son is the father, or have this situation happen? When I was in high school, I went to a school with a dude who got a girl pregnant. His parents were pretty religious, so they were super supportive of the pregnancy. But they implored him to get a paternity test. I know this because I was friends with the cousin who told me. 
They waited till the baby was here though, so this guy who has never had a girlfriend before, was super religious, and has only had sex with her, got time to get nice and attached to the idea of being a father. He was not the father. I kind of suspected it, because while the girl in question did not have quite the reputation of the girl you mentioned, she was kind of more cavalier with her sexuality than the young man in my story. Him not being the father kind of screwed him up for a bit, because the child had the same middle name as him. He took pictures with her pregnant belly, etc., so it might be a good thing that you are pressing X, so to speak, right now. Updates. Am I the a-hole for using if when it comes to my son becoming a father? So, a DNA test was performed. The baby that my son's girlfriend is carrying is definitely his. After much discussing, they have decided that they are going to raise it. I can't say that I'm 100% thrilled with their choice. I think they are young, and the other parents have admitted that their daughter has been in and out of treatment facilities for depression over the years, but it's their choice, and there is not much I can do about that. My son has gotten a full-time job and is 100% dedicated to raising this child, to give it everything that it desires. The girlfriend is on certain medications and is seeing the doctors weekly, and the baby is doing great. My husband and I have agreed to help out as much as we can. I don't have regrets for doubting my son's paternity, but I do get why the parents and my husband were taken aback, so I did apologize to them. Thank you all for the best wishes. Great job. You are not the a-hole to begin with. It was hugely appropriate to get the paternity test for your son. Like, what if the child wasn't his, and he was saddled with the responsibility of raising it for a high school girlfriend that had cheated? Paternity tests should be mandatory for all births where a male is in the home. Glad you apologized to them. Hopefully you apologized to the 17-year-old girl as well. You mentioned that she was being treated quite a bit for depression. You should mention to your son at some point to keep an eye out on her for her PPD. Congrats on being a grandparent. OP, you needn't apologize. It's only sensible for an unexpected pregnancy. I personally think a DNA test should be performed before a father's name is listed on a birth certificate. That would uncomplicate a lot of scenarios that seem to pop up later on. Alright, that's where I think I'm going to end today's episode, guys. As always, I really do hope you learned something or just really enjoyed the posts that were put up today. Quick shout out to all my new and existing Patreon and channel members. You should be able to see your name on screen right now. And if you don't, then I don't think you're part of the club. And you really should join the club because it's a great club. And I want to thank every single one of you guys for supporting me in this journey. It really means so much to me and I love you all so much for it. Thank you for helping me out. As you can tell, I'm now happy and healthy back in Australia. Thank God it's not cold like Ireland. <laughs> I don't like wearing jumpers everywhere. I prefer the heat. Thank you very much. I know that's an unpopular opinion. Anyway, guys, I really do hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you later. Bye.